Walker's Soul Bossa Nova by Quincy Jones. That's the music. That's the theme tune for Free Speech Fridays, the last segment of uh, my show here on the platform. We get a couple of people in and we just talk over the issues. The issues of the week. I will just deal with a couple of pieces. Everyone says, oh, Jason owned you. Jason summed you up. I hate Jason. I love Sean. If you want to listen to Neil Oliver, there are tons of places you can. Me having Neil Oliver on the platform on these issues doesn't increase the sum knowledge of anyone. All right? And, you know, you don't want to overdo a good thing, do you? Um, And there are a few Jasons out there. There are far more people who get what we're doing here. And really, they're like petulant children. People like, you're not giving me what I want. I dare you. I dare you or I'm going to tell my dad. I'm going to tell my dad if you don't do what I want, it's not fair. Now, Jason, I'm always going to have the last word, mate. It's the joys of live broadcasting. Uh, All right, so let us, I think we got both our participants and our participants in Free Speech Friday today from the backbencher tavern, uh, the publican, how do I get them both up? Uh, We got them both up now. Uh, Is Alistair Boyce. Boycey, how are you? G'day, Sean. I'm well. Good to be with you. Um, Did you host um, Trevor Mallard yesterday or did he go to some working man's club? Uh, b- by the time Trevor Mallard deigns to ever come across uh, my way, I'm a- I'm asleep because I've been working so many hours in small business. He doesn't have to work. He can just ponce about doing whatever little things come to his mind, like setting off sprinklers and loudspeakers and annoying thousands and thousands of people. OK, so Labor don't use the backbencher for their valedictory after matches. Uh, no, they do, but recently there's that guy who's a bit... Bit of a loud mouth over in the back bencher, and they're not keen on his politics. <laughs> and also joining us for the first time is the youngest mayor currently serving in the country. He is from the six fingered capital of the of New Zealand, Gore. He's twenty three years old. His name is Ian Bell. Ian, uh, ben, sorry, Ben Bell. Ben, um, welcome, Ben, to the platform. Lovely to have you with us. Good morning. Lovely to be here. All right, now, Ben, 23 years old, I think you're crazy wanting to get involved in politics, um, but here you are. How, how long have you been in office now, for a week? Uh, not even, yeah, about a week now, but with the recount pending and things, I, the, the swearing-ins got postponed and all sorts. How close so are things? Could you lose it? Uh, it's, there's, there's eight votes, so um, the judge is deciding on whether we're even going to go ahead with a recount uh, today. Eight, um, eight, are you kidding me? Eight, eight votes, Ben? Eight votes in it, yep. Well, I guess you everyone's everyone's related in those eight people because it's score, but um, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's close. <laughs> that's close, mate. That is really close. Yeah, uh, sure is. Ah. Uh, everyone's, so, everyone's claiming to be that, that eight, those eight people. You know, everyone who congratulates me, they go, oh, I'm one of those eight. Eight right, people. Okay. Oh, God. You can claim it. <laughs> what do you think, Alistair? That'd be terrible, wouldn't it? Eight votes. Even if you win. Oh, man. You'd be on the edge of your seat. Yeah, and even if what you, you win. What you do is stick to duck shooting down there. Duck shooting down there is religion. They stop rugby on, on um, weekends, on duck shooting weekends. I used to go down there every year. It's a phenomenal place. I love it. Mm, I haven't been to Gore in a while, um, and only then to pass You need to go there. You, you've got this problem about them being inbreds, obviously, and, you know, that's not very woke and kind of you, Sean. And no, but that's the because the only person I know really well who comes from Gore is Barry Soper. And, well, that obviously proves your point. Yep. Yeah, exactly. You see, you see what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Ben, I feel got, for you, yeah, mate. I understand now. Um, look, let's let's get to the issues of the week, then, guys. And, and Ben, it may be the last time you appear as the mayor of Gore. God, I just cannot believe that. All well, right, I, I hope not. All right, uh, either of you Shakespeare fans? Yeah, I'm all right with Shakespeare. I I remember doing Macbeth and stuff like that, and uh, I was quite taken with parts of it. And yeah, no, I'm. I'm, I I find it unbelievable that they cancelled it, and and the reasons behind it, um, uh, absolutely appalling. Yeah, I think uh, Ben, they could have got away with it if they haven't hadn't published that internal report or the review that said Shakespeare. Uh, has produced a canon of imperial. It's a canon of imperialism. That was really their problem 
was the critical race theory rhetoric around the decision, wasn't it? There was a bit of that, but also having the PM go through the, the same thing that they were defunding as well would have caught the attention of, you know, ministers around the place. So for it to to not be, you know, saved, I think, would have been pretty far-fetched. Um, but, yeah, to, to catch the, the, the windfall of media that they've got, absolutely. Yeah, and, and boy, suddenly... I, I mean, I think it's almost a pivotal moment, guys, that that was the straw that broke the woke camel's back was bloody Shakespeare and having a crack at Shakespeare, Boise. Yeah, yeah, no, you're dead right. It was uh, the straw that broke the camel's back and you can just push it too far. This um, ideological woke government uh, have, have just uh, empowered um, this false ideology through the country and um, at some point people are just going to um, come back at it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, ben, so the government stepped in, the Ministry of Education is going to take over the funding. Does that solve the problem for you, Ben? Or might we still be concerned that there are people making decisions about arts funding who hold the sort of, I'm sorry, wrong-headed views about colonialism and post-colonialism that we saw in that um, Creative New Zealand report? I mean, it, it somewhat shows the dangers of, of organisations that, that have no uh, ministerial influence. You know, the, the fact that, that ministers had to step in to make sure that funding was was still there because of an organisation that um, kind of didn't actually have the advice of, of the community and was somewhat, you would think, is somewhat out of touch. Um, so I, I think it's, yeah, especially with the local body elections just being, there's a lot of people who are who are quite aware of decisions being made around them. Um, so to try and get away with something like this um, is, is a pretty bold move. Yeah. Look, the other story that caught our eye this week and we did an interview on it, but once again, it seems to me, Labor are listening or they realise they're in deep trouble. This crazy scheme the Ministry of Justice had that duty solicitors in district courts would get paid extra if they could convi- if they could convince um, the people they were representing to cop a guilty plea and not clog up the court system, and something like a hundred and twenty dollar a case bonus for getting I don't know the guy who's up on the DIC charge or the drunken disorderly charge to say yep fair cop I'll take the fine. Um, it seemed to me as a layperson a crazy thing to do. Can either of you see any merit in that plan? I, can't, I mean, I can, see where the, uh, I can see where they're coming from, um, but also I'm kind of getting sick of the government getting involved in the judicial process as well. Um, they're actually, you know, trained professionals and shouldn't have to have uh, central government especially kind of lording over them and saying, hey, you know, do this for us, scratch our back. Mm. They actually have a job to get on with yeah. um, and shouldn't be swayed by, by any external factors. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, Boise, if I had a lawyer who I knew was getting a bonus for making me guilty, I would, would look at him and say, look, how committed are you to, you know, doing your best for me, mate? Yeah, I'd be changing my lawyer, and if he can be turned for that amount of money, he's definitely not a lawyer yeah. you want. <laughs> That's the other thing. The money involved was just pathetic. We're not paying lawyers enough per se. Um, but as it was, Kerry Allen, the day after that story break, broke pretty well, or two days after... Kerry Allen, the Minister of Justice, steps in and says, no, that is over. And what struck me, guys, about that decision was um, the government obviously crunched the numbers, did some overnight polling, thought we're on a loser here. Uh, No matter the upside of the system, we're not even going to try and and defend this. We're just going to lance the boil and move on. And I looked at that and I looked at Shakespeare and I thought this is definitely a kind of a mood change, a mood change. And I wonder, and uh, interested from both of you, I wonder if this might happen on bigger issues. I wonder if we might not see in the next month or two, uh, let's have a cup of tea and a think about three waters. I think, yeah, well, I, think I, would, I don't think they're going to turn. I don't, I don't think they're going to change back. I think they're going to double down. They're certainly this move on on the farmers, which I'm sure you and the rural sector, which I'm sure you'll get to next. 
Um, that's the one they've really got to uh, turn back. But the co-governance three waters is um, so divisive. Uh, and you, you'll see the rise of Winston Peters, and you're already seeing that. But I'll be interested to hear the mayor from Gore. Yeah. Ben? I mean, it's it's... It seems like all of the political parties at the moment are kind of a bit... No one wants to jump the gun here. Everyone's kind of waiting to see what everyone else does, and we're not actually having any good ideas come to come to the forefront, which means the current government just kind of, kind of gets to move ahead with their agenda. I think until we get to see better policies come out um, with this election cycle, which I don't know if anyone actually has any better policies on this stuff, um, then we're kind of just going to get stuck in this loop. And, and yeah, this... Ben, I think that's Labor's a really good... I think that's a really good observation. I, I think opposition parties are sitting there going, what's the nicest flavour of vanilla I can come up with? Yeah, you've got you've got Labour saying we will do it, you've got National saying we won't do it, but there's actually nothing behind that, that facade of what it actually means. Mm. Did you get tractors out in Gore yesterday? <clears throat> sure did. We've got... Uh, Groundsville was, was sounded right on our back doorstep, so, yep, Absolutely. All right, and was it hijacked by VFF, like stuff reports? Was it full of fascists and white supremacists, like, I don't know, Newsroom would have supported, or the Disinformation uh, Project would have, or is it just people who are a bit pissed off? I think, I, I personally think that, that Groundsville, uh, you know, they the, the core organisation and the founders, because I've obviously had good conversations with them, are doing the right things and they're getting farmers, you know, out there and, and sharing their voice. I think there's definitely other community groups that are jumping on that, that bandwagon and it can kind of get out of control. But I do think that the media is focusing on that side of things rather than farmers actually just sticking up for themselves and yeah. protecting their businesses and saying, hey, look, these conditions are unworkable. Yeah. Boy, see, I understand Parliament was a, basically a, a fizzy yesterday. It was just a few utes and some dogs. Yeah, it was a fizzer, and the most disappointing thing was that no one uh, representing the government came down. Uh, Nicola Willis came down and spent some time over there. Um, I popped over myself to have a look around and uh, basically to drum up some business for the pub, which did actually work. The, the, the farmers are quite happy to drink and eat and participate in our uh, society. Uh, let's not try and um, rub out the rural communities of New Zealand. Mm. I mean, this is diabolical um, policy, ideologically mm. driven. Mm. It makes no sense uh, in regard to uh, global emissions. Um, it's only going to make them worse, and it's going to destabilise our own economy and drive up prices. Mm. I, I just can't mm -hmm. believe the stupidity of it. Mm. Uh, I agree, yeah. and as we, I think Alan Jones, I mentioned a, a figure he had, and it may be more than this, 97% of global warming and greenhouse gases are made naturally and have nothing to do with man. 97%. Yeah. So you do you think closing down 20% of New Zealand beef and dairy farms is going to do anything? No. No, it's just going to divide the country and um, <laughs> create a minor civil war. <laughs> well, I'm not hoping for civil war. Let's hope it does not. it does not get to that. Guys, the other thing that happened this week, the government basically got rid of most of the last vestiges of the age of COVID. And uh, I think it has abandoned plans to extend the COVID emergency powers past May of next year. So um, border requirements are gone. MIQ is gone. The only thing left really, some mask mandates and medical settings and self-isolation if you test positive. Uh, for COVID. I don't know if to me it feels a huge relief. It, it feels like maybe we are coming out the other end of this thing, Ben. Yeah, absolutely. It, it does feel like this is this is pretty much over. And um, yeah, I mean, people are still getting getting sick with COVID, but because, you know, they're either vaccinated or have had it before or whatever, it doesn't, doesn't seem to be terrible. Um, I've got friends who have caught it for a second time and they seem to be fine. So yeah, it's just, it's fantastic to get, get the world moving again. Yeah. Um, does this mean too, Ben, that maybe we can, I'll just stop saying, oh, it was all a conspiracy and Pfizer were running the government, you know, because people are still quite obsessed about all that, some, or some people, a very small number of quite committed people, and I use the <laughs> term committed quite broadly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I won't yeah, give any credit to saying that it was a conspiracy at all, but um, I, I do think, you know, the, the timing of things, maybe we could have ease restrictions earlier, I, I don't know. Um, I don't 
wasn't a minister who had the actual facts in front of them. Um, but definitely from, from Joe Public's point of view, it kind of seemed like we, we were um, extra, extra careful. And yeah, yep, that, that saved lives. But could we have been a little bit more risky and um, keep the economy a bit healthier? I, I don't know. Boise, do you think the anti-vax nutters will shut up now or not? No, they were vociferous way before COVID. Um, just on other issues. Taking them on. Pardon? So just on other issues. So they're never going to shut up about this? No, I don't think so. No, 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 no it's an, an entrenched rabbit hole. So that, they'll, that, that will stay there, but it may not be prominent. Uh, we need to get the prominent issues out, like, you know, turning back three waters and co-governance and turning back this assault on the rules. So I'm going to have to put up with the same 50 people telling me every week that they'll never listen to me again. Yep. Oh, yeah, no, you just got to get over that, Sean. You just got to move on. Okay. Don't cancel them, but don't don't give them any more airtime than the, what, what they need. Oh, I but mean, if I don't the give them airtime, but... Boise, they say that I'm <laughs> cancelling them. Yeah, no, no, you've done quite well in those interviews you did. Uh, yeah, I, I thought you were perfectly reasonable in wanting some facts and figures. I mean, if you're going to come out and make uh, these statements, um, the anti-vaccination statements and all that, you, you do need to produce Just some evidence. facts would be nice, wouldn't they? Yeah, I mean, you can produce anecdotal evidence and have an opinion, but uh, but don't don't cast that out as absolute fact, because it's not. Mm. Now, can I ask both of you, and I know this isn't on the agenda, have either of you seen a documentary on TVNZ called No Māori Allowed? No, I haven't. You haven't? Alistair? Not Was yet, but um, I did listen to your uh, podcast uh, with the, pro I think it was the producer. Yeah. And I'll definitely search it out. And yeah, yeah, it's it on TVNZ+. On plus. Ben, could I suggest, even though you're from Gore, that you watch it as well? It's about Pukekohe. It's a really good documentary and just a well-made yeah, piece of television. So, Ben, this recount, mm -hmm. mate, when do you know? Hopefully today. Hopefully, uh, what's the time now? Hopefully the judges are about to meet as we as we speak, um, and then something hopefully will fall out of that. Um, what that actually looks like, I don't know at this stage. Um, I'm kind of left in the So you're in limbo, stage. mate. You're, oh, what a terrible way to be. Yeah, yeah, I just want to crack on with the job. You know, I've, I've gone out and I've been to men's school and I know how to do it and I've built the relationship with my counsellors and, I'm, you know, I'm pushing on regardless. Um, but, I, you know, I would like to get into the building and kind of get sworn in and, yeah, get, get some decisions made. Great. All right. Um, good luck with it, uh, Ben, and I'm not wishing bad luck to your opponent, but I've met you. You seem a nice young <laughs> fella. Um, Thanks. So good luck, eight votes. And as I said, they'll all be relatives of both of you. Um, Alistair, you are, I understand, waiting in queue for the ferry. I am, yeah. I've um, finally got a few days off, so we're going down doing a bit of deer hunting down um, South Cor Cor Way. Uh Weather's not looking too good and we're already over an hour delayed, so uh, we'll see what happens. All right, if you bring some venison back, give me a yell, mate. I'd love some. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll feed you, Sean. No problem. All right, You keep coming into the pub. I'm All not right. going to cancel you out of the backbencher. <laughs> Uh, ben Bell, Mayor of Gore well, at the moment, and uh, Alistair Boyce, Boise from the Backbencher, our Free Press Speech Friday panel today. It has been quite a week. It's a short week next week, a long weekend. Please do enjoy your long weekend. Do not get too obsessed about the WEF or world conspiracy theories. Try to enjoy what will be slightly better weather. Be kind to the people uh, around you. And let's talk again Tuesday morning when our new format will be starting to take shape, it'll still be the good old platform, open, tolerant and free. A eh, wetter. Uh, that's what we're aiming at. Um, and it really has been a good week. I thank Avi Yemeni for finally getting out of bed, answering his phone and uh, telling his story this morning. Our friend from Weather Watch for telling us the weather's going to be a bit better. And all your calls. Really good morning for calls from citizen journalists telling me about their experience of the groundswell protest yesterday. I don't think it was hijacked. Uh, I don't think it was hijacked by anyone. Um, maybe journalism in New Zealand has been hijacked by idiots is the problem, um, really. Um, and certainly the eyewitness accounts we got suggest it wasn't what you were told in the papers.